Late 2024, India's Ministry of Mines releases an announcement that reverberates across global markets and diplomatic channels. The nation has discovered lithium reserves estimated at 5.9 million tons, buried beneath the contested terrain of Jammu and Kashmir. The number is staggering, the implications potentially transformative. Additional significant deposits have been identified in Karnataka's southwestern reaches and in Jharkhand's eastern mining belt, regions historically associated with agriculture and conventional mineral extraction, not cutting-edge energy materials. For ordinary Indians, this felt like a pivotal moment, a chance for their nation to finally claim a seat at the table of 21st century technological powers. Headlines erupted. India's clean energy future begins, the end of Chinese mineral dependence. Analysts predicted a new era where India could dominate electric vehicle manufacturing, battery storage infrastructure, and potentially semiconductor production. It was as though the nation had unlocked a vault containing not just physical resources, but geopolitical leverage. Lithium, after all, isn't just another mineral. It's been called the white gold of the clean energy transition, a fundamental component in batteries powering everything from smartphones to electric vehicles to grid-scale solar storage. For a country that has historically depended on foreign imports for advanced technological components, this discovery represented more than mining economics. It symbolized national pride and strategic possibility. But then came the questions. The uncomfortable, technical, sobering questions. Could India actually extract this lithium at commercial scale? Could it process raw ore into battery-grade materials? Could it compete with nations that have spent decades perfecting every stage of the lithium supply chain? The celebration was genuine, but the skepticism was equally real. And that's where this story transforms from triumphant headline to complex reality. Just as media coverage reached its peak enthusiasm, a different chorus of voices began speaking, quieter, more technical, considerably more skeptical. India's mining engineers, geologists, and industrial strategists stepped forward with a harsh reality check. In their assessment, the celebration was premature, because discovering lithium in the ground and transforming it into usable industrial material are fundamentally different challenges. One senior mining expert stated it bluntly, right now, we lack the infrastructure to utilize what we've found. Start with extraction infrastructure. India simply doesn't possess the large-scale lithium mining operations, advanced extraction technologies, or automated systems that countries like Australia or Chile have developed over decades of specialized investment. This isn't as straightforward as digging up dirt and loading trucks. Lithium is frequently located deep underground, intermixed with rock formations, or trapped in salt brine deposits that require sophisticated extraction techniques, consuming enormous quantities of water and energy. Then comes an even more formidable obstacle processing. Once lithium ore is extracted, it must be refined through complex chemical treatments and transformed into battery-grade materials a high-tech, capital-intensive process that India currently lacks capacity to perform at commercial scale. As of now, India doesn't operate a single large-scale lithium refinery meeting international battery manufacturing standards. Even if India were to partner with foreign companies from Japan, the United States, or Europe, the timeline would stretch across years. You're looking at extended periods to construct facilities, develop specialized workforce talent, establish supply chain networks, and navigate stringent environmental regulatory processes. And these international partnerships introduce their own complications, geopolitical dependencies, profit-sharing tensions, and technology transfer disputes. In essence, engineers across the country are conveying a consistent message. Yes, the lithium exists beneath Indian soil, but utilizing it demands a massive capability leap the nation hasn't yet achieved. This reveals the fundamental tension, the chasm between what appears possible in press releases and what's achievable in industrial reality. To understand India's mineral predicament, we must address the dominant force in the room, China. Now, when people imagine mining dominance, 
they typically focus on who possesses the minerals. But that's only half the equation. Real power doesn't lie in extraction. It lies in what happens after raw ore leaves the ground. And in that critical domain, China controls the board. Over the past two decades, while other nations focused on consumer technology and climate policy debates, China quietly and methodically constructed a mineral empire. It didn't merely mine rare earths or lithium. It invested massively in refining infrastructure, smelting facilities, chemical treatment plants, and high-purity processing capabilities, precisely the stages required to transform raw material into components usable in EV batteries, solar panels, or advanced weapons guidance systems. Consider these numbers. China refines 87% of the world's rare earth elements which are essential in everything from smartphones to fighter jet components. It processes 68% of global silicon, the backbone of electronics and solar energy infrastructure. And most critically for this narrative, China handles 58% of the world's lithium, not just mining it, but converting it into the battery-grade chemical compounds that power modern technology. That's not merely impressive, it's dominance. Almost no nation can manufacture high-tech devices today without engaging Chinese-controlled supply chains. Now, let's apply this to India's situation. Despite the recent lithium discovery, India still imports over 80% of its processed lithium from China. And it's not limited to lithium. For bismuth, a critical metal used in medical imaging equipment and electronics, India depends on China for a staggering 85.6% of its supply. This dependency isn't accidental. It's the cumulative result of decades of underinvestment in mineral processing infrastructure. While China was executing a long-term strategy, other nations were reactive rather than proactive. So even though India now possesses raw material deposits, it remains trapped in a global system where China controls the gates. If you want batteries, semiconductors, solar panels, you need Chinese processed minerals. That's the unvarnished truth. No quantity of patriotic headlines can alter this overnight. This brings us to a fundamental misunderstanding. People assume that discovering lithium reserves automatically translates to wealth and industrial capability. But reality is far more complex. Let's examine why extraction and utilization are entirely different challenges. Imagine discovering oil beneath your property. Exciting, certainly. But if you lack equipment to drill it, refineries to process it, or pipelines to transport it, you simply have a black liquid underground with no practical value. That's precisely India's situation with its lithium discovery. Just because India has identified lithium deposits doesn't mean it can immediately convert them into usable battery materials. Mining and utilizing are separate games entirely, and India is still at the starting line for both. Begin with extraction. Lithium in locations like Jammu and Kashmir lies deep underground, frequently trapped in hard rock geological formations. Extracting it isn't comparable to surface mining gravel. It requires advanced drilling, controlled blasting, and chemical leaching techniques that are capital-intensive and environmentally sensitive. One misstep risks ecosystem damage or inflaming political tensions in already volatile regions. And even if India successfully extracts the ore, the real bottleneck emerges. Processing. Raw lithium ore is merely the initial step. To make it industrially useful, it undergoes multiple transformation stages. Crushing, chemical treatment, high temperature conversion, and purification. This produces battery-grade lithium hydroxide or carbonate, the actual materials that power electric vehicles, laptops, and smartphones. But here's the obstacle. India doesn't possess the facilities for this transformation. It lacks chemical refining plants, specialized workforce talent, regulatory frameworks, and advanced machinery required to process lithium at commercial scale. Right now, that entire middle section of the supply chain, from ore to usable material, is absent. Even when India attracts foreign partners with processing technology, it's not an instant solution. 
Constructing these facilities requires years, costs billions of dollars, and encounters numerous regulatory obstacles, from environmental impact assessments to land acquisition disputes. And geopolitical risk factors complicate investment decisions. Who invests billions in a lithium processing plant if local protests or political shifts could shut operations down unexpectedly? This is why experts consistently warn merely possessing lithium isn't sufficient. You need a comprehensive industrial ecosystem to transform resources into economic power. And currently, India's system remains incomplete. So what is India doing? That's what we explore next. The desperate workarounds, the international alliances, and the race to construct capability from virtually nothing. Confronted with the reality that it cannot yet transform lithium into usable resources, India has begun scrambling for solutions. It's kind of like discovering gold, but realizing you don't own excavation tools. So now you're attempting to borrow, build, or purchase them as rapidly as possible. India is pursuing all three strategies simultaneously. First, consider international alliances. India recognizes it cannot compete with China in isolation. Consequently, it's reaching out to nations equally interested in reducing Beijing dependence. The Indian government has been developing a critical minerals alliance with partners including the United States, Japan, Australia, and the European Union nations possessing both resources and technology to fill capability gaps. Australia has lithium reserves. Japan has battery manufacturing expertise. The United States has innovation capacity and diplomatic influence. Together, they're attempting to construct a more balanced global supply chain, one not umbilically tied to Chinese refineries. But diplomacy alone isn't sufficient. India must also accelerate domestic action, so it's reforming regulations. In early 2024, India liberalized its mining laws, permitting private companies to explore mineral deposits without requiring comprehensive government licenses up front. This represents a significant policy shift. It enables startups, foreign firms, and Indian conglomerates to enter the sector without drowning in bureaucratic processes. Then there's the Production Linked Incentive Scheme, a government program offering $2.1 billion to boost domestic battery manufacturing. The concept is straightforward, attract companies to establish battery plants within India by providing cash incentives tied to production output. Build here, and we'll compensate you more generously. Signs of progress are emerging. Major Indian companies like Ola Electric and Reliance are laying foundations for gigafactories. The government is identifying additional lithium sites in states including Rajasthan, Chhattisgarh, and Andhra Pradesh. It's a race to discover and refine, with the clock relentlessly ticking. But all of this also reveals something deeper. India is desperate. Not weak but acutely aware of how substantial the gap is and how limited the time to close it. China didn't construct its mineral empire overnight. India is attempting to fast-track that same decades-long journey in just a few years. It's an audacious effort. But will it be sufficient? To answer that, we need perspective on the global landscape and must ask a difficult question. Why has no one else successfully caught up with China? To understand India's uphill challenge, we must ask, if mining lithium and building supply chains were straightforward, why haven't other nations already surpassed China? The concise answer, because China started early, moved decisively, and executed a long-term strategy. More than two decades ago, while other countries debated climate change policies or continued investing in fossil fuels, China was quietly securing the future. It began acquiring rare earth mining operations in Africa, constructing massive refining facilities domestically, and training thousands of engineers in metallurgy and chemical processing. By the early 2000s, it was already converting raw materials into the high-grade components required for semiconductors, solar panels, and electric vehicle batteries. Today, China controls overwhelming shares of global refining capacity. 87% of rare earths, 68% of silicon, 
58% of lithium, and over 70% of graphite processing. This isn't merely about extraction. It's about constructing an entire integrated ecosystem. China invested in ports, railway networks, and power infrastructure specifically designed for mineral transportation. It subsidized companies to establish processing plants. It encouraged state-backed enterprises to acquire overseas mines, particularly in Africa and Latin America. Meanwhile, Western nations attempted countermeasures. The United States reopened a rare earth mine in California. The European Union funded critical mineral initiatives. Japan invested billions in battery research. But no one caught up. Why? Because China didn't just participate in the market. It shaped the market itself. Its government offered long-term supply contracts, undercut competitor pricing, and absorbed short-term losses to eliminate rivals. It's the same strategy Walmart employed to dominate retail or Amazon used in e-commerce, scale rapidly, lower costs relentlessly, and secure customer loyalty before competitors can respond effectively. For India, the lesson is stark. Merely discovering lithium isn't enough. You must control the complete chain from raw material to finished product, and constructing that chain requires decades, not just encouraging headlines, Consider rare earths as illustration. The United States has deposits. So does Australia. But without China's processing infrastructure, they're just rocks underground. Or examine gallium and germanium, critical materials in semiconductors and solar panels. When China restricted exports in 2023, global markets panicked because almost no alternative refining capacity existed at commercial scale. This is the industrial equivalent of a high-speed train departing the station while everyone else attempts to catch up on bicycles. India is trying to leapfrog. It has energy, international partners, and now raw resources. But the fundamental question persists. Can India genuinely break free? So here we stand. India has discovered one of the world's largest lithium deposits. It has global ambitions, governmental commitment, and mounting urgency. But now comes the difficult part, transforming rocks into power. The excitement from 2024 was authentic. When the Ministry of Mines confirmed 5.9 million tons of lithium in Jammu and Kashmir, it felt like India had secured a golden ticket to the future, the dream of fueling its own electric vehicles, batteries, and high-tech industries without depending on Beijing. But every credible expert agrees that dream remains distant. India needs more than lithium. It needs a comprehensive system, advanced mining technology, chemical refining capacity, skilled technical workforce, industrial facilities, and stable regulatory policies. That means billions in investment, years of experimentation and optimization, and international partnerships that actually deliver tangible results. Can India achieve this? Honestly, it depends. If India acts decisively, reforming bureaucracy, accelerating private sector innovation, developing technical expertise at scale, and securing robust international alliances, then yes, it's achievable. Not immediately, but within a decade, India could construct the foundation of its own mineral ecosystem. But if enthusiasm fades, if projects stall in regulatory limbo, or if geopolitical tensions undermine partnerships, then India risks falling into the same trap that has ensnared many resource-rich nations, abundant in raw materials, but poor in execution capability. Because here's the fundamental truth. The global mineral competition isn't merely about economics. It's about power. Whoever controls the materials controls the technology. And whoever controls the technology shapes the future. The mineral war has begun. And India's role in it, whether as independent power or dependent player, remains to be written. The rocks beneath Jammu and Kashmir hold possibility. But possibility alone doesn't build batteries, doesn't power vehicles, doesn't secure independence. Only capability does. And that's what India must now prove it can build.